In a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the six-shooter, just one of the many great stars brought to you on Sundays on NBC. Every Sunday, hear Hume Cronin and Jessica Tandy in The Marriage, Sir Lawrence Olivier on Theater Royal, Lawrence Tibbet with the Golden Voices, Helen Hayes, Frederick March, Rex Harrison, and Lily Palmer on the NBC Star Playhouse. All of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the six-shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl, its handle unmarked. People call them both the six-shooter. Coleman, America's leader in modern automatic home heating equipment, and the National Broadcasting Company present James Stewart as The Six Shooter, a transcribed series of dramas based on the life of Britt Ponson, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still remembered legends. Now, in just a moment, immediately following this important announcement, you'll hear Act One of The Six Shooter. The Red Cross trains millions of Americans each year in first aid, water safety, home nursing, and as volunteer nurses' aides. Volunteer nurses' aides assist professional nurses in hospitals and clinics. This help requires skill. It is through the Red Cross that you and your neighbor can get that skill, can get that training. Through the Red Cross, you can answer the call of your family and your community. Help make this training possible. Give through the American Red Cross Fund. Now, Act One of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart. The trail to Virtue City was over the crest of Bare Neck Mountain and then down the northern slope. That's why you couldn't see the town until you were almost there, dot in the clouds. There always seemed to be a stack of thick, marshmallow clouds along the side of Bear Neck, and by the time you got through them, the town was right in front of you. Anyway, it was about two o'clock in the afternoon when I hit the city limits, and at least what had been the city limits 10, 15 years ago. Of course, nowadays, houses on the outskirts weren't, weren't much more than just loose timbers and broken windows. When I reached the main street, things looked more normal. Not like a real town, of course, but... Well, the mercantile was open, and the bank, and the post office. Ten or twelve stores, maybe, all still doing business. I spotted what I was looking for. Oh, boy. Oh. The sign on the opera house said, Rocky Mountain Western Railroad, Virtue City Office. Well, I, I guess they might as well use the opera house for something. Jenny Lynn sure won't be singing there anymore. Not like she did for the grand opening. Uh, howdy. Afternoon. Excuse me. Uh, oh, sure. Mind handing me that box? Hmm? Uh, that, that one there on the desk. Oh, oh, this one, yeah. yeah I want to put these papers in it. Yeah, thanks. Uh, you're cleaning out the office, That's huh? right. Oh, I see, yeah. Moving to another place. Yeah. Well, I, I guess there's plenty of vacancies in Virtue City, isn't there? Yeah. There'll soon be one more. Oh, wait a minute. What? You leaving town? I sure am, mister. In three weeks. That's what I wasted here. Three weeks. Well, I'm not wasting any more time. Tomorrow night, that's the deadline. Then I take the stage. Virtue City doesn't deserve a railroad, and they're not getting one. Hmm? Well, what's on your mind? Uh... Well, I, under the circumstances, I'm not exactly sure. That's no surprise. Nobody's sure of anything around here. No, no, what I mean is I was figuring on signing up with the railroad. I've laid track before, and I thought that I, uh... Well, I I heard the new line was going through Virtue City. You heard wrong, mister. Uh-huh. Well, I'm sorry to have troubled you. There's other folks who should be sorry. Gave me their word. 
Said they'd have the right of way free and clear. I ought to sue them. That's what we ought to do. Grit! Grit Ponte! Hmm? Over here in the courthouse! What? It's me, Doc Cross! What? What? Oh! Oh, hello, Doc! Come on in! I'd like to come on in! Oh, well, sure! Doc? Second office, Britt, on your right. Oh, ah. Uh, say, I, I didn't know you were still living on a... What, well, what in the thunder are you doing on a wheelchair, Doc? Oh, I fell off my horse a couple of months ago. It was his fault, not mine. Oh, his fault. Oh, sure, yes. Did you break anything? Well, I ain't positive. I had to send for Doc Sampson over to Watsonville. He says I broke my leg. Oh, butcher... Don't think he'd know a broken leg from a floating kidney. If you ask me, he's keeping me off my feet so he'll get a crack at all my patients. Oh, well, Doc could do you good. Get a little rest. Mm, maybe. Hey, well, sit down, Britt. Sit down. Sit Thanks. Down. Well, I was kind of surprised to see the courthouse still open. I, I thought they'd moved the county seat over to Fort Gray. Politicians. Yeah, those people in Fort Gray bribed the legislature. That's what they did. But we'll get the county seat back again. Just you wait and see. Meantime, we're using the courthouse for a city hall. <laughs> I guess we got just about the fanciest city hall west of Denver. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I'm the mayor now, Britt. Oh, yes, wow. <laughs> Good um, you. What about you? What brought you to Virtue City after all this time? I hope you ain't just passing through. No, I'm afraid so, Doc. I was aiming to sign up at the railroad, but since they ain't coming this way... I'm... Not coming this way, but... Who well, told you that? Well, that fellow over at the opera house. Oh, right? that's Nelson. Fab Nelson. Don't pay no attention to him. Well, he works for the railroad, doesn't he? Well, yes, he does. But he ain't never wanted the line to go through Virtue City anyhow. He'd rather rent the way of Watsonville. If you ask me, Watsonville is paying him off. Oh? That's the reason he's been looking for an excuse to get out of our contract. He figures this trouble with Annie will let him off the hook. Annie? I... Silver Annie. You remember her. Britt Annie Huxley. Annie H- Oh, Annie Huxley. Oh, sure. Well, I thought she'd moved away. No yeah. such luck. She's still sitting on the old Huxley mine like a hen hatching eggs. Only thing is, there ain't no eggs in that mine, not anymore. Well, what's she got to do with the railroad, though? Well, Britt, the route's been surveyed to go through her property. Town agreed to secure all the right-of-ways a railroad would need. We're willing to pay for them and a good price. But Annie's not satisfied with what you're offering. We don't know. She won't talk to us. Won't even let anybody near her shack. Oh, oh. She just sits there day and night, right by the window with her <laughs> shotgun poking out. Anybody comes on her land, she lets go. Oh. Got some fool notion there's still silver in that mine, and folks are trying to get it away from her. <laughs> well, I'm crazy. That's what she is, if you ask me. Oh, I wouldn't say that, Doc. Uh, maybe Annie's living the past a little bit. She's got quite a past to live in, too, you know. She was, I, I remember about her wedding to Sin Huxley, about how he put down a street of silver dollars all around the church. You remember that? Yes, well, that's beside the point. I sent for Clyde Huxley. Clyde? Clyde? Yeah, oh. he's a relative of Sin's, a distant cousin or something like that, but a relative. We had to pay his fare all the way out from Chicago. Mm-hmm. He's seeing Annie yet? That's where he is right now, and he'll straighten her out. You see, he's a lawyer, and he's not the kind to put up with any nonsense. So, but... Well, Mr. Huxley, I didn't see you ride up, and I've been watching the street. I didn't ride. I walked. You... Oh, now, don't tell me that horse of mine threw you, too. I, I'm just going to... didn't throw me. Where will I find the chief of police? What? I'm charging that woman with attempted murder. Oh, you don't mean Annie. Now, I do certainly you? do mean Annie. She ought to be locked up. And if I have anything to do with it, she will be. Oh, uh, then she... She wouldn't sign over the right away, huh? Not even for you, her own kin. I didn't get a chance to discuss it. She shot at me, point blank. Well, don't look like she hit you. It was a miracle she didn't. Well, I, I guess she just didn't know who you were, Mr. Huxley. She didn't recognize you. I told her who I was. Right after that, she fired. <laughs> yeah, well, some folks just don't cotton to relatives, it seems like. Well, she, she tried to kill me. Oh, no, she was just defending her property, Mr. Huxley, uh... If she'd wanted to kill you, you wouldn't be walking around now. Annie knows how to handle a gun. Well, now, we we got to do something, Britt. If we don't have that right away by tomorrow, Nelson, he, he's the railroad man, Nelson will leave town. The railroad will go through Watsonville, and that'll just about wash up Virtue City once and for all. Well, now, there must be some way of explaining things to Annie, Doc. I'd throw her in jail. I'd just have to make her more cussed than ever, you know. But, say, maybe there is another way. Sure. Somebody she trusted, somebody who didn't have no axe to grind, she'd listen to him. Now, uh, now, Doc. You got those papers already for her to sign, Mr. Huxley? Uh-huh. Doc. Uh, well, then uh, give them to Britt. 
Doctor? Doc, uh, now this ain't my affair, Doc. Now, I don't want to get mixed up with this. Oh, I know you, Brick. No, you but I... don't let us down, not at a no, time like this. I... Go on, Huxley, give him the papers. Now, wait a minute. We'll I... never forget what you're doing, Britt. The whole town will be in your debt. Just get her to sign and the places are marked Doc. with an X. Doc. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I was riding up to the Huxley mine. Annie's shack was next to the main shaft, about a hundred yards off the road. I slid down out of the saddle and tried the gate. Holy smokes. Padlock big enough to protect the Denver Mint was chained around the post. Well, I had nothing else to do but climb over the fence. getting on toward dusk. Now, I, I didn't know whether to sneak up on Annie unawares or just walk up to the front door in plain sight and take my chances. While I was making up my mind, I, I flattened down behind a pile of wooden boxes. And I, whew, well, at least one thing was certain. I wasn't going to sneak up on her unawares. Go on! Be it! Next time I won't miss I'll put that thing down, Annie, or I'll shoot it out of your hands. Well, who's out there? Who is that? Britt Ponsett. Britt? That's right. I might have known. None of the flea-bitten skunks from around here would have nerve enough to talk to me that way. All right, I'm coming in, Annie. I guess there's no stopping you. Not that I believe you'd ever try to shoot this gun out of my hand, Britt, no matter what you say. Well, that makes us even, man. I don't believe you would aim it at me, either. Ah. Uh, how are things, Annie? Well, not too bad. Not too bad. Hey, close that door, will Sure, you? sure. Fact of the matter is, Britt, I've been working the southern shaft lately. Found a vein that looks real promising. One of these days, the Huxley will be going full force again. Mm-hmm. Now... Annie, no, you don't really believe that. Why, of course I believe it. Why shouldn't I? We took a quarter of a million dollars out of this mine, Sin and me, and there's plenty more. It's just a question of finding it. Here, you want some coffee? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Now, th th these hills have been worked dry, Annie. There's no silver in them, not anymore. And uh, that's why I came up to talk to you. Here. Drink your coffee. Thanks. It's about the right of way for the railroad. You're just wasting your breath. No, but Doc Cross said you didn't know anything about the railroad, that nobody had been able to explain it to Ah, oh, nobody had to explain it. There's nothing goes on in Virtue City that I don't get wind of. I ain't lived here 35 years for nothing. Oh, Doc says the town needs the railroad, needs it bad. Why, I got no objection to a railroad into Virtue City. Probably need it myself to haul the ore out when I strike a rich vein. But the line don't have to go through my property. Mm -hmm. A mountain country like this, railroads don't have much choice. I asked Doc Cross, the only other route would cost a whole lot more money, more on the Rocky Mountain Westerns willing to pay. Well, that ain't my problem. All I care about is the Huxley. And they not laying any tracks across it. All right, Annie. All right. That's the way you feel. Thanks for the coffee. Oh, uh, I guess maybe I ought to warn you. Your cousin's talking about putting you in jail. <laughs> he ain't my cousin. He's Sin, and Sin never had no use for him neither. Well, whoever he is, he's... And as for covered. putting me in jail, he'll have to find somebody to come out here and arrest me first. From what I've seen of him this afternoon, there ain't much... Ja there she is, hey! uh, Give me that gun, Annie. Don't make no trouble. Well, what's, what's going on here, Huxley? I told you I was going to swear out a warrant for arrest. Thanks to you, the sheriff was able to serve it. Great, Hans, it. Oh, wait a minute. Annie. Of all the low down me. Annie. Keeping me occupied so no, they no, could I... sneak in here. No, Why? Come on, Annie, let's go. Listen, Annie, I can swear I've to you I've done that. enough listening to you already. Annie. Take your hands off me, sheriff. I ain't one of the girls from Crawford Saloon. I'm Silver Annie Huxley. And when I go to jail, I go under my own power. We'll return.
return to James Stewart as the six-shooter in a moment. First, a word from Coleman, America's leader in modern automatic home heating equipment. When winter comes, does your house shrink like this? Well, I guess it's time to close off the two back rooms. There's just no way to heat them. Don't deprive yourself of valuable living space. Get a Coleman floor furnace or wall heater and enjoy new warmth and comfort in the hardest-to-heat rooms. A Coleman floor furnace or wall heater takes up a minimum of space, yet it gives you constant circulation of fresh, warm air, just as a big basement furnace does. You'll be snug and comfortable all winter long. And if you're interested in economy as well as comfort, listen to this. Coleman floor furnaces and wall heaters are low in price, low in operating cost, because Coleman gives you maximum heat from the fuel you use, either gas or LP gas. See your Coleman dealer tomorrow. You'll find his name and address in your telephone directory. Remember, comfort costs so little with a Coleman. Now, Act Two of The Six Shooter, starring James Stewart as Britt Ponsett. Well, they put Annie in a buckboard and started out for town. I rode alongside for half a mile or so and tried to tell her I wasn't part of getting her arrested, but she wasn't listening. So I gave Scar his head. It was about nine o'clock when I got back to Virtue City. The place looked even stranger by night than by day. Just a light here and there where folks were living. And then whole blocks of darkness in between. Sort of like a like the candles on a cake when part of them had been blown out. I stopped off at the mansion hotel long enough to get me a room, and then I headed over to Doc Cross's house. He was sitting in the living room eating a box of hard candy when I got there. Come on in, Brick. Come on in. How'd you make out? Get her to sign on the dotted line? No. Uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, oh, I ought to know better than to eat this stuff with my teeth. Sure is good, though. Have a piece? No, no, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> well, now, you mustn't feel too bad, Brick. I was afraid you wouldn't have much luck with her. So was Mr. Huxley. He, uh, he went ahead and got that warrant drawn up. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh? Uh-huh. Yeah. I was there when the sheriff arrested her. She thinks I was in cahoots with him and Huxley. Oh, well, now that's a shame. But don't you worry. I'll see she finds out the truth. No, oh, I guess it served me right for getting mixed up in her affairs. Now, you wasn't mixing, Britt. You were just doing us a favor, and we're all much obliged. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, sending for Clyde Huxley was just about the smartest stunt I ever pulled. Maybe, maybe so, but you haven't got the right away yet. Mm, we'll get it, Britt. We'll get it. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think jail and there's the answer. Besides, you'll have to turn her loose anyway. Huxley can't make that charge of attempted murder stake. No, he's not charging her with anything, Britt. What? It's just a question of whether she's got all her faculties or not. That's what the hearing will be about. You mean... Well, you mean he's claiming she's crazy? Well, you said yourself she was peculiar. I said she lived in the past, that's all. Everybody's got something to remember, does that, more or less? Well, in her case, it's more, not less. Of course, it's up to Judge Drayton to decide. Well, hasn't there got to be medical testimony in a sanity hearing? Yep. Huxley subpoenaed me this evening. Oh, doggone it, Doc. Now, this just isn't right. Huxley's her only relative. He looked up our state law. It says the nearest relative can demand a sanity hearing if there's sufficient cause. You take that mine away from her, you'll break her heart. Now, now, wait a minute, Britt. You said yourself this wasn't none of your business, that you were sorry you mixed into it. Sure, uh, but it just looks like I got mixed up in it. All right. Good night, Doc. I'll see you later. Now, Mrs. Huxley, I want to get this clear. You admit firing a shotgun at various people who've approached your place of residence at various times. I've shot at people trying to get into the Huxley mine, if that's what you mean. Mm, That's right. Now, how often has this occurred? As often as they tried it. (laughs) Yeah, now, order, order, now, now, you, you come to order. It's a very serious matter. Now, let's see, where was... Oh, yes. Uh, Well, uh, surely you must admit this uh, behavior of yours isn't uh, exactly uh, normal? It's normal for me. Now, order, 
What I mean is, the average person doesn't use firearms on harmless visitors. The average person don't own the Huxley mine. I do. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, yeah. Your Honor. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Huxley. This is the crux of my poor cousin's delusion. This feeling of hers that the Huxley mine is of some great value, that it still contains silver, when we all know that it's worthless. And just how do you know that? You've proved it to us. For ten years you've lived there and searched the shafts every day. Have you found silver? Even a trace of it? No, I ain't. You see, Your Honor. If that makes me crazy, then sin must have really been out of his head. He spent 12 years prospecting that mine before he made his first strike. I still got two years to go before I'll be even with him. Oh, yes, but there was silver there then. Where is now? Your Honor. I'm sorry, Mrs. Huxley, but after what Doc Cross said and then what you yourself say, well, I'm afraid that uh, uh, the law allows me no alternative uh, but to... Uh, excuse me, Your Honor. Now, now, see here. We're not going to have any more interruptions. Who is that man, Doc? Rip Hudson. Huh? Ponson, the six-shooter? Yes, and now don't do like well, that. Well, if there's something you wish to say, Mr. Ponson, <laughs> this here court will be happy to hear you. Oh, thanks, Judge. Uh, I've been listening to this hearing, and uh, like Mr. Huxley says, it all seems to hinge on whether or not there's any silver in the Huxley mine. I mean, what, what I mean is, if there was silver, then Annie's actions wouldn't seem so strange, would they? Well, uh, no, 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 uh, I suppose not. Uh, she'd be protecting a valuable uh, piece of land. But... Yeah, uh, well, now, uh, I think maybe you ought to see this report here. You see, I took some ore samples from the Huxley mine over to this assay office this morning. And, uh, well, well here, here's one of them. I'm uh, afraid I don't uh, quite follow you, Mr. Paul. Well, if you'll just read that report, Your Honor. Uh, let's see our samples tested, so... Uh... Value of approximately $125 a ton. Well, 125 Yeah, I figured they'd run a little higher, but I guess... Uh, I guess right here. They Let they me see that, Judge. I can't believe it. Well, that, that that's what it says, all right. 120 uh, uh, Britt, Britt, this all come from the Huxley? Yeah, yeah, that's where it came from. <laughs> listen, listen, everybody. Everybody, Annie's found silver again. For all we know, the whole town has sitting on it, just like in the old days. Silver! Hey, yeah, but, but what about the railroad? You've got a contract with my company. We don't need your railroad, Nelson. We've got silver. Yeah. Yeah. Please, 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 please. Order. Now, uh, now, I wouldn't be too hasty, Doc. Of course, there's no possibility of bringing the line through the Huxley now, I suppose. But uh, there is that other route. It would cost Mr. Nelson's company a little more money. Uh, but, that, uh, that, that might be arranged. Uh, of course, I'll have to check with the main office. Oh, you would? Huh? Oh, well, that seems a shame. Too bad you can't sort of make the decision right now on the spot, you know, before another railroad hears about the silver and tries to beat you in here. Oh, you know? no, no, no. On second yeah. thought, there really isn't any reason to delay the matter. If you'll just drop by my office, Dr. Cross, I'll send the contract and uh, give the order to begin construction on the other route. Uh, yeah, I think the Well, I guess that takes care of everything, except Annie and the sanity hearing. I, uh, you were just about to hand down a ruling, Judge, weren't you? You come to order. You come to order. Well, there's, there's no question about her sanity. <laughs> and I'm surprised at you, Mr. Huxley. A lawyer of your standing, pressing a complaint like this. Why, Silver Annie Huxley is one of Virtue City's outstanding citizens. And always have been. You always will be. Uh, uh, court's adjourned. <laughs> Inside of five minutes, the only people left in that courtroom were me and Annie. It's a funny thing, you know. She was the only person who hadn't been excited about the silver. She just kind of stared at me without budging. And then the corners of her lips sort of wrinkled up into a smile. Great Ponce? Yes, ma'am. You better get out of town before they find out. They'd tar and feather you for sure. Well, what, what, uh, what, what, what are you, what are you talking about, Annie? Why, you think I didn't recognize that piece of ore? 
I ought to. I've been looking at it for 30 years. Uh, hmm? Them samples have been sitting on my dresser ever since Sin found them in his first strike. No. You saw them last night. You knew they were souvenirs from the old days. Well, they could have been something that you dug up recently, couldn't they? <laughs> I'm not saying you lied, Britt. All you told them was that the ore was from the Huxley. That's true enough. It's just a good thing they didn't ask you when. Yes, I guess it is. I guess it is, yeah. Well, anybody can make a mistake, you know. You knew what you were doing. And you knew the railroad would be coming through the other route before they got wise. No, I, I wouldn't exactly say that. But uh, under the circumstances, I kind of think maybe I'd better leave town. Don't you think that would be... <laughs> so long, Annie. Wait a minute, Britt. I want to thank you. Oh, well, nothing to thank me for, Annie. It just looks like I can't tell old ore samples from fresh ones. That's all. <laughs> A month or two later before I heard about Virtue City again, bumped into a fellow in Idaho Springs who was heading up that way. He said there'd been a big silver strike near the town. I, I tried to talk him out of going over there. I told him it's probably just a false alarm, but he wouldn't listen. He said there'd been a false strike three or four weeks ago, and everybody went out prospecting. And the first thing you knew, somebody found silver. The real thing. The fellow had a newspaper from Virtue City to prove it. Editorial on the front page was by Doc Cross about moving the county seat back to where it belonged. Mm. Well, things sure have a funny way of working out, doesn't it? Here's a tip for more great dramatic entertainment each week on the NBC Radio Network. Direct from his great hit in From Here to Eternity comes a new dramatic Frank Sinatra to play the hard-hitting adventure role of Rocky Fortune every Tuesday evening. And if comedy is your weakness, you'll want to know that Fibber McGee and Molly are now heard every day Monday through Friday on the NBC Radio Network. Remember, you'll hear more of America's greatest radio programs if you keep your dial set to this same station of the NBC Radio Network. Coleman, America's leader in modern automatic home heating equipment, and the National Broadcasting Company have presented James Stewart as the Six Shooter. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, Thunder Bay. Others in the cast were Jeanette Nolan, Dan O'Herlihy, Herb Bygren, Robert Griffin, and Parley Bear. The Six Shooter is an NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions and is based on a character created by Frank Burke, and the transcribed story is written by him. Special music was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. Hal Gibney speaking. Listen to Last Man Out, next on the NBC Radio Network.